Welcome to Door of Hope TV show, taped in the Mount of Temptations cave studio of Living Bread International. Living Bread International is a registered NGO, a church full of conquering love, and an international media ministry bringing the good news to the poor. From its central offices in Jerusalem, you will be showered with blessings as you join in the humanitarian and educational outreaches to the refugees. Lives are being transformed as the anointed teams of grace pray for the sick and the life-giving spirit of Jesus Christ rapidly spreads throughout the land. Join with the team in prayer for the children as they enter the camps with the mandate to bless the children. The Holy Land, a good land flowing with milk and honey, has given a great welcome to Living Bread International, its volunteers, and the move of His Spirit. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our Door Hope studio right here in the Mount of Temptation Cave. Many of you know that this is the east gate and the doorway to the promised land. This is where Joshua brought all of Israel across the Jordan right here into Jericho, the point of blessing into the promised land. So we're here on this holy mountain. It's called the Mount of Temptation. We're outdoors. So if you see some birds or a bat or moss or flies, remember we're outdoors. The Lord gave us favor with the man that is in possession of this, of this mountain and the Mount of Temptations restaurant. And he gave us this studio to use for our Dora Hope TV show. We want to invite you, if you've never been to the Holy Land and you want to take a tour, consider taking a tour and also reaching out to the refugees with us. We're reaching out in 27 refugee camps. It is a sign and a wonder. We're being invited into the camps. Uh, we're sitting with the people in the camp. We're taking milk for the babies and baby blankets and baby bottles. We're taking the good news. We're giving out gospels. If you want to get involved in something that's eternal, if you want to get involved in something that has awesome, awesome rewards, then get involved in our ministry. Living Bread International is an NGO. It's also an international church. We also have a media ministry. We need help in every area. We need help in every area. We so appreciate you at home praying for us. We appreciate you funding us. And it's so needed. It is just so needed in this big task that we got going throughout this land. But we also need you too. If you can't go, then send somebody because we can use you. And I just want to tell you thank you for your faithfulness in praying for us and funding us as we move throughout the land. Lives are being changed. We got that letter from the man from Iran. We have a letter from a man from Saudi Arabia. A lot of these Muslim countries, which you are helping us fund the gospel, this show right here is also subtitled in Arabic. It's subtitled in Arabic, and it's going to the Islamic nations. Your funding is helping put the gospel there in the Islamic nations, and they're hearing the good news that Jesus Christ will heal their bodies, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ will judge their enemies today. You don't have to wait for glory for the Lord to get shaitan out of your life. Jesus Christ will move him out of your life today. He will move shaitan out of your life today. The Lord is the way, the truth, and the life to come into his kingdom. You say, dear Lord Jesus, make me yours. Give me the faith to believe you. Fill me with your power. And that fast you're delivered from darkness into his marvelous light. And it is for the whosoever. If you're out there today, it doesn't matter if you're Arab. It doesn't matter if you're African. It doesn't matter if you're Israeli. It doesn't matter who you are. My Father's kingdom is big enough for everybody. He is the creator of the universe. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He opens a door that no man shuts, and he shuts doors that no man opens. My God stretched out the stars, stretched out the heavens with his hands. He knows every star by name. My God is the Redeemer. 
He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My God is salvation. He is the way and the truth and the life. And I just want to invite you into his kingdom because he's, his kingdom's open for you. And the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, I'm in 1 Corinthians, and I want to talk to you about God, when he walked this earth, he picked 12 apostles. And Paul's talking about what the apostles were. Now, these are, these are disciples. They're laying hands on the sick, and the sick are being healed. These apostles were mighty men of God. Most of them were martyred. Maybe all of them were, according to history books. What we follow in the word of God, they suffered for the gospel. They followed Jesus Christ. And these were mighty men of God. And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Paul said, I think God has exhibited us apostles last of all, as men condemned to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. You are prudent in Christ, but we are weak. You are strong. You are distinguished, but we are without honor. Now he's talking to the church. He's out there on the mission field. He's risking his life for the gospel. He's willing to suffer many blows. Paul went to prison. He went to jail. Uh, Paul was shipwrecked. He was snake bit. Paul suffered for the gospel. And he's talking to the church. He said, at this present hour, we're both hungry and thirsty and are poorly clothed and are roughly treated and are homeless. So Paul is saying, to this present hour, and he's writing this letter to the church. We're hungry and thirsty. Now, these are the mighty men of God. These are God's hand-picked. These are who Christ picked, who dwelt with him while he walked this earth. And he said, we're poorly clothed. We're roughly treated. We're homeless. It says, we toil, working with our own hands. When we revile, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure. When we are slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become as the scum of the world, the dregs of all things, even until now. He said, I don't write these things to shame you, but to admonish you, my beloved children. For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I exalt you, exhort you, be imitators of me. So Paul said, imitate me. He said, I'm going to come to you soon if the Lord wills. And I will find out not the words of those who are arrogant, but their power. Watch this. This is a key to the kingdom of God. He says, I will come to you soon if the Lord wills. I will find out not the words of those who are arrogant, but their power. Now watch this. 1 Corinthians 4.20. The kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. The kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. I want to tell you something. Tuesday at the service at the Jericho Church, there was a man that came to church. He was mute, and we had prayed for him a few weeks ago. So they brought him to the front of the church, and they wanted me to see that he could speak a few words. And I said, God, we thank you for that seed. He couldn't speak. Now he's saying, Luyah, for hallelujah. And I says, Lord, we accept this seed. And we say, blessed be the name of the Lord. But I said to my friend, I think we need to pray for this man again. And we prayed for a man that was deaf and mute. And now he hears and now he speaks. That is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not about word, but about power. You say to me, I want to show you my religion. And I say to you, show me your power. I've got a God where the lame will walk and the blind will see and the deaf can hear. And I have seen the Lord take people that were mentally schizophrenic, told there was no hope for and turn around and touch them with his power, and they walk free. I've seen homosexuals set free by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the kingdom of God is not about word, but about power. No matter what your God is, no matter where he is, I say today, look for the power because there's only one great and awesome power and he stretched out the heaven with his hands. He is the Lord of the universe. He's a God of great power. He's a God of healing mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. He's no respecter of men. He loves you and he loves me and he loves the whosoever. God loves all the people. They're created in his image. God didn't create any mistakes. God is a God of power. Now, I know there's witches out there. I know there's warlocks out there. I can read in the Bible and see that the people that were under the curse were suffering. Their bodies were suffering. They were suffering madness of mind. They were suffering incurable diseases. So I can see by what I see in the natural that there is an evil power out there. There is an evil one named Shaitan, named Satan, who's out there trying to destroy lives. But I can tell you by the spirit of the living God, God is the power. God is the healer. He's the redeemer. He's the restorer. And he'll transform your life. If you look God's way, you never have to look back. You can be the biggest warlock out there. And you might be using spells and you might be casting spells and you might have many people under you. But I'm telling you today by the spirit of the living God, my God's power is greater. My God's power is the power. He is the creator of the universe. He is the most high God. He is the one that breathed his breath into Adam. He is the one that put Adam to sleep and out came Eve. My God is the God who breathed his life into man. And through the spirit of the living God, this Bible from Genesis to Revelation was written. These men that wrote this word were writing under the influence of the spirit of the living God. Living Bread International, a registered Israel NGO being led by Karen Dunham, is being used by God to change cities, regions, and nations. This international media ministry is reaching out with the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. This ministry is bringing His conquering love, His education, and humanitarian arms to the lowly and oppressed. Join with these teams of grace that are transforming lives. Living Bread is now flowing milk throughout the land into 27 refugee camps in an area where God says is a good land flowing with milk and honey. Join with those that have a desire to serve God and be part of a great move of His Spirit. You too can help by prayer, funding, or volunteering. Contact information is on your screen. Look what the Lord is raising up in the east gate at the Jordan River across from Jericho in Israel. This point of blessing is where Joshua brought all of Israel across the Jordan River on dry ground into the promised land. Come, cross over into a new realm of His Spirit we have not traveled before. God has found Himself an obedient generation. By special invitation, this ancient gate that had been closed for a generation is being opened for you. All are invited this day to come and prophesy, worship, and pray. The palm trees have bowed in expectations of a move of God. Elisha received a double portion of the Spirit as he picked up the mantle of Elijah at this point of blessing. The Israeli handicapped are making silk mantles for you in an anointed labor of love. Let's bless them and honor God as we pick up our mantles at the river. Move with the Spirit of God as He turns the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Now Paul is an apostle of God. He said, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, 
there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it may leave me. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul, for my power is perfected in weakness. What is God saying? His power is made perfect in weakness. Now you meet people and there's nothing against education. But sometimes you meet people that have been through so much schooling and so much learning and they have so many programs set up. There's no room for the spirit of the living God. There's no room for his power. Then you meet somebody over there that's had a very little bit of education and they're over there laying hands on the sick. They're over there preaching the gospel and signs, wonders and miracles are happening. God said, my power is perfected in weakness. If you're out there and you're not perfect, if there's things in your life that have made you weak, God says, my power is perfected in your weakness. Now he gave Paul this thorn in the flesh to keep Paul from exalting himself because of the great revelations that Paul was seeing. So Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, I am content with weakness. I am content with insults. I am content with distress. I am content with persecutions, with difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Paul says, for when I am weak, for then I am strong. I have become foolish. You yourselves compelled me. Actually, I should have been commended by you. For in no respect was I inferior to the most intimate apostles, even though I am a nobody. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs, wonders, and miracles. Paul says the signs of a true apostle is somebody in your midst performing signs, wonders, and miracles. This is written in 2 Corinthians in chapter 12. Now the word says in 1 Peter 3, in verse 16, it says, Keep a good conscience so that in the thing which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Look at verse 17. For it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. For Christ died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who were once disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Do you realize how many people lived on this earth when Noah built that ark? There were many, many people here, but only eight people were brought into the ark. Time is short. Jesus Christ said, narrow is the gate. We need to learn godly living. We need to bless those that revile the, us. It says right here in 1 Peter 3, it says, do not return in verse 9, evil for evil or insult for insult, but give a blessing instead. For you were called for that very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. How many out there would like to inherit a blessing today? How many out there need a blessing today? The word of God says when they revile you, bless them. If you're in traffic, someone tries to cut you off, Lord bless you. Maybe you're in the grocery store with your shopping cart and someone tries to run into you. Lord bless you. 
if you could get it quickened into your spirit to bless every time something foul came your way, if you could bless every time a little tribulation came, every time your kids complained, Lord bless you. If you can release blessing, if you can release blessing, it says that you will inherit blessing. It's a reap what you sow. They curse, you bless, you inherit blessing. It said, the one who desires life it says, do love and see good days. Keep your tongue from evil and lips from speaking deceit. The Bible says, keep your tongue from evil and lips from speaking deceit. It says, you must turn away from evil and do good. You must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears attend to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. It says, who will harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? It says, even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. God says you want to inherit a blessing, bless those that curse you. God says you want to inherit a blessing, bless those that insult you. God said, for this very purpose, you were called that you might inherit blessing by turning around and bless those that curse you, bless those that revile you. The spirit of the living God, Lord, we just pray right now that you just quicken the spirits of everybody watching out there that they may respond with blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you when they're being reviled, when they're being slandered, when they're being stoned. Lord, let them break into an inheritance because it is written, you inherit every time you bless when you're in the middle of a storm or in a tribulation. It says, keep a good conscience so that when you're slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. It says, God may be willing it so that you suffer for doing right rather than suffer for doing wrong. Lord, we just thank you right now that the blessing of the Almighty God is falling upon us. I thank you, Lord, that the word of the Lord is falling on rich soil. And Lord, I pray when you go to the grocery store, when you're in traffic, when that person is being so angry with you, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you can release a blessing and inherit a blessing from the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen. What an opportunity to make it happen for others that have heard the call of God to go into the world and preach to all creation. You can co-labor together with us at Living Bread International and the others that have answered the call of God to go. Many have stepped out of the comfort zone to serve the King of Kings and the good land flowing with milk and honey. You too can be the conquering love of Christ by acts of goodness and kindness. In Psalm 68 it says, the dove that stays at home can share in the spoils. Pray and agree with us, for it is written, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You and your church are invited to come and minister to the Lord as you reach out to the refugees. Make an outreach with Living Bread International part of your tour to the Holy Land. Come join a team that is making a difference. Contact information is on your screen. International Church is reaching out with the good news and seeing lives transformed. The Lord says, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in, naked and you clothed me, sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. 
The righteous said, Lord, when did we see you in these conditions? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these my brothers, even the least of them, you did it unto me. Let's minister to the king by funding outreach for them. You can help fund the preaching of the gospel, praying for the sick, repairing their homes. Join the mission by funding our food stamp program. King Solomon wrote in the Proverbs, He who is gracious to the poor lends to the Lord. Let's work this great commission together. and our Palestinian brothers and sisters for inviting us into your city and into your homes. We want to thank the volunteers that have left the comforts of their home and came here to the West Bank, this place where God says is a good land flowing with milk and honey. The bridegroom is coming for a spotless bride. Join with us in this glorious celebration. Your support is making a difference. Thank you for watching Door of Hope.